Sarayaku is a region in the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. It is widely understood to be one of the most diverse places on the planet, and it's also home to indigenous people who have lived there in harmony with nature for many, many years. One of these communities is the Sapra. The Sapra consider the conservation of nature and Mother Earth to be of utmost importance. In recent years, however, the thing that the Sarayaku region has become known for is not its beautiful surroundings or strong connections to nature, but rather being the pillar of resistance to resource extraction in Ecuador's Amazon. Despite the fact that Ecuador was the first country to formally include the rights of nature in their constitution. The Ecuadorian government is aggressively pushing to open up even more lands to new oil drilling. Oil and natural gas resource extraction in these areas can destroy some of the most ecologically diverse rainforest habitats remaining on Earth and can also destroy the age-old livelihoods and cultures of indigenous communities like the Sapra. One of the corporations who puts communities like the Sapra and ecosystems like the Amazon at risk and creates similar harm all over the globe is ExxonMobil, one of the largest publicly traded companies in the world. ExxonMobil is such a large corporation that they alone produce approximately 3% of the world's oil and 2% of the world's energy, with a daily production of 3.921 million barrels of oil. Things that ExxonMobil works on includes oil exploration, oil shipping, and the wholesale selling of oil and natural gas. They are also a major refiner of petroleum. They have mines, refineries, and laboratories spanning across multiple continents, and the fossil fuel products that they produce are used to generate electricity, make gasoline, and power things that we use each and every day. One big problem, however, is that their operations have significant, oftentimes very negative, effects on the local communities and habitats where they extract oil and natural gas. Communities like the Sapra, for example, have no voice in protecting the homeland from being destroyed by ExxonMobil or other energy corporations' oil extraction. It is often these communities who are contributing so little to global warming who are affected by it the most. This is one big reason why what ExxonMobil does, purely to make a profit, is truly unjust. What is even worse than this is that ExxonMobil has a long history not only of denying that their actions contribute to the greenhouse effect and climate change, but also denying that climate change even exists in the first place. For the last 40 years, ExxonMobil has been a major lobbyer of climate change denial and actively lobbies against the scientific consensus that burning fossil fuels contributes to climate change. They have funded advocacy groups that dispute the impacts of global warming and started the Global Climate Committee of Business, which are opposed to the regulation of greenhouse gases. In 2015, the Attorney General of the State of New York decided to take action against the harmful practices and ideology that ExxonMobil is known for. The Attorney General's prosecutors claimed that ExxonMobil had known for decades about the impacts of carbon emissions on climate change, but did not release this information to the public and all the while continuing to extract and refine fossil fuels that they knew would contribute to climate change and cause harm to countless people, plants, and animals across the globe. We now know that these claims turned out to be true. It was found that as early as 1977, well before even the majority of the public was aware of this issue, ExxonMobil was aware of climate change. Despite all this, ExxonMobil spent the next 40 years ignoring the warnings of its own scientists and refusing to publicly acknowledge climate change. To make things even worse, they have spent vast sums of money to promote climate change misinformation. In order to accuse ExxonMobil of something that they are more likely to be held legally accountable for, this court case has since been narrowed into the claim that ExxonMobil has defrauded shareholders by downplaying the financial risk it faces from possible future climate change regulation. In December of 2019, the New York State Supreme Court concluded that ExxonMobil is not guilty. The outcome of these lawsuits sheds light on a larger issue, which is the inability of the public and the government to hold companies responsible for their impacts on climate change. Companies are not held responsible for the negative impacts of their actions. We are in effect putting the short-term profits of corporations ahead of protecting our planet from the major drivers of climate change. And over the people and communities all over the world that are feeling the effects of climate change. The fact that ExxonMobil has misled the public about the effects that climate change will have on their future operations, and that they have spent the last 40 years lying to the public about the drivers of climate change, 
all the while being one of the single largest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions globally, is a moral injustice. Their deceit, motivated purely by profits, has robbed humanity of a generation's worth of time to reverse climate change. We must stand up to these companies and remind them that their actions affect every plant and animal on Earth. And this means that people from all over the world should have a say in what Exxon can and can't do. Justice can only be achieved when those facing the worst impacts of ExxonMobil's business operations are the same people who have a say in how these operations are run, and as of now, this has not been the case. Thank you for watching this episode of Planetando's video series on climate justice. Be sure to like and subscribe for more.